Okay, this one is called Hollywood is investing into anime for modern audiences from Chibi. This should be a good news if resources are being poured in to make more anime that we love, but at the same time, I could see it going the other way too. Japan's anime boom is attracting wealthy investors, major conglomerates, yeah. from Hollywood giants to loaded conglomerates. Everyone is investing in anime. Great. Well, there you have it. The beginning of the end. <laughs> You know, the money, the investments comes as the cost, right? Because I think the idea and the notion is the doomer side of this news is while it may seem good that we're getting more resources to make more anime, when you have an influx of tourists coming in and completely changing what the core fans of the anime wanted, like these are completely new people. They just see that the anime is doing well and they're injecting money in. But while doing so, it's not going to retain the original identity or the reason why we watch anime. That's, I think, the bad news, potentially bad news, right? For the last bastion of untouched media that the West hasn't touched. We have all seen in recent years on just what beloved franchises have been done by big companies. Disney yeah. is a good example of what they do. Star Wars got completely ruined rights to the point where even the creator of Star Wars is saying there was a fucking mistake. ...done to Marvel and Star Wars. And it's really sad that for decades now, anime has been pretty much untouched. It is that bastion of just like, it is weird. It is not for everyone, it just it does its own thing. It's very yeah. different from other forms of entertainment in media. And now that Hollywood is dipping their toes and fingers into the anime and manga pie, it's only a matter of time until it is eventually pushed out like just um, factory-made stuff. Like, it's just... I mean... I mean... Have you seen the Isekais recently? Every other season. Kadokawa pumping out like 20 isekais a fucking season and they're all dog shit. Maybe there's like one or two good, but I feel like we're already having factory made just like garbage pumped out for the sake of the bottom line. It's on a factory produce cycle and there is no love, care, or passion for these projects. I mean, I, am I crazy? I feel like we're already there. It's gonna get worse, I guess, if this comes in, but like most of the anime we watch, it's very rare that I can see the love and the passion poured in. Most of the shit we watch is just garbage mid-animes that's just brutally forced with the skeleton crew with a lot of the, you know, the workforce being um, fucking offshore. And you can see the, the quality of the animation. At all for the original work because what these companies are going to want and what Hollywood is going to want is just to make as much money as they can while watering everything down to the point where it's for modern audiences when anime never should be for modern audiences and this is the part where gatekeeping actually i think makes sense right it's a very context dependent thing of trying to keep tourists out and gatekeeping versus trying to be open and invite more people to enjoy you know anime that we all love but in this specific example i think gatekeeping is probably the right idea then let's let's talk about that one for a second anime has always been weird I think anyone that is, you know, not just surface level anime watcher, for instance, they only watch, let's say, no offense to these people, but you only watch JJK or Boruto or you watch Dragon Ball, etc. You know, if you watch... Battle Shonen anime people, I think, are probably the most normal people that watch anime. Hot take? I don't think this is even a hot take. I think this is a lukewarm take. I think that the normies that only watch Battle Shonen are probably the most, like least degenerate people that watch anime. I think the most degenerate people that watch anime are probably people that watch slice of life, uh, etchy, harem, rom-com shit. Yup, I'm sticking by that gun because the battle shonen people, the Naruto people, they just want hype fights. They just want hype fights and hype animation. The other side of the people, they just want to see little sister say Oni-sama in a weird fucking way. More than that, you'll know that anime it's pretty weird. It is. It, it, it's very weird. There is a lot of weird stuff in anime. And because of the weird nature of anime, and especially manga, even diving an extra layer deeper, light novels, and then web novels, it's weird where it turns off a lot of people from 
basically wanting to start certain series and it's effectively it's like how do you introduce someone to gushing over magical girls you don't you hope that they're just as degenerate and will turn a blind eye of a bunch of middle school girls into this bdsm shit I'm like what the fuck is going on its own gatekeeper it gatekeeps people away but the thing is, is that we have seen as of late that yeah. a lot of stuff has been manipulated by Western companies. Crunchyroll is a good example of this, mm -hmm. of what they have done to some anime. May Dragon is a good example. Obviously, this is old story. Are we talking a complete difference in animation? Like, I thought we're, I thought that woke localizers were going in and basically um, injecting their own Western ideologies onto the subs and making it a little bit different from the source material but is there something else going on but the point still stands is that we have seen these western companies yeah straight up take a series and try to make it for modern audiences or censor it or some shape or form we have seen this just to be able to make i've seen that happen with video games and it's never turned out well right they always say i mean even right now what the fuck is going on with like assassin's creed uh with the japanese drama right a quick buck but also agenda push and the fact that we're going to have more companies from hollywood aka the west diving into the anime pie mm -hmm. it's going to cause a lot of things to be censored or changed and as more investors come into the picture for instance more western companies true and that's another thing with more advertisement investors like you may not be able to pump out all those degenerate etchy shit right uh, I don't care what your opinion is about ecchi or like fan service or harm animes. It's not about that. It's about the fact that these different companies and advertisements are going to come in with different set of guidelines that's going to be so heavily pushing censorship. And again, censoring titties and ass, it's never about the titties or the ass. It's about the precedent that it puts of censorship and what this could potentially do in the future, right? This kind of, um, I, I think, uh, censorship is actually really against you know, freedom of speech start to dive into the anime market they're gonna have a lot more say in the matter of what is produced and what is not produced what gets the green light and what gets potentially axed now what do you think will get greenlit do you think that there's gonna be more shitty isekais probably wonder if they're gonna try to mass produce more webtoon animes because they see a gold mine there and it's still a lot of untranslated work i don't know what would they do what would they ax what would the Western investors think about, you know, series like Gushing Over Magical Girls? Or even shows like Chain Soldier, right? I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Now, obviously, Japan, for better or for worse, they are a country that, you know, is very traditional. And because of how traditional they are, they don't change quickly. And, you know, the good part about this is, is that they usually don't want to accept interference from mm. outside of their country. But also the problem is they don't want to accept interference from outside their country. And this is a, a double-edged blade because like you have examples of manga that obviously is really unique and great, but straight up get axed because obviously Japan doesn't care about the Western audience. They only care about the Japanese, Japanese audience. And so there's a lot of stuff that just gets destroyed because obviously the West has no opinion on it. And so this can, you know, is a good and a bad thing. Like I said, it's a double-edged sword. But the point of the matter is, as more and more Western companies dive in to the sad pie, it's going to make it to where they have more of a voice than the Japanese audience, and it's mm -hmm. going to cause it to where it waters down the very material that many anime fans have been getting into for a very long time. And again, this is the Doomer opinion, right? And it's a realistic one. I think that based on trends in history and what we've seen of different industries and niches, you know, uh change with different investor western investors coming in i think that this is definitely a feasible theory but just know that you know we're just speculating here it, it really could be different hopefully ideally and make it to where it's no longer a a form of entertainment that is actually meant for you it's kind of like you know going back around to this because it's a very good example star wars yeah. star wars or marvel especially star wars i'm a big star wars fan i love the original trilogy i even love the uh you know prequel trilogy I absolutely hate the new trilogy, and I know that is not a hot take. That's a very... I think that's pretty much the popular opinion, right? The fact that they took over the series from George Lucas, and they just, just created fucking bullshit, and everyone's like, what is this garbage? Full take. And also, there is a lot of the spinoffs that's come out, like Mando, etc., that I personally am not the biggest fan of. I, wanna... I heard that the Mandalorian was actually pretty decent, though, because it was like a spinoff story. To be completely blunt, you can feel free to disagree with me. But the point of the matter is, is that it's very clear that modern-day Star Wars is not for me. Even though it's weird, because 
It's like they don't make Star Wars with the OG fans, the people that have been basically nerding out for it for a very long time. And I feel like that's what's going to happen to anime, is that they're going to cater to individuals that don't really care about the overall, I guess, lore, so to speak, of anime itself, and all the nuance and the different layers of anime and manga, and they're only going to care about surface-level stuff. And it's going to water down the stories, it's going to water down just what to expect, and it's just going to feel very safe. And I don't want... And that's the funny thing, because like, I feel like that's already happening right now. I genuinely feel, because like, I, I watch a lot of fucking seasonal animes, right? We're not watching only old animes in this channel that gets voted in through community polls. Every new fucking season of anime, every three months, we check out pretty much everything, right? Like 20 plus different animes that we're checking out. And I've noticed that most of it is just uninspiring, garbage, mediocre series that was simply just pushed out to suit some kind of threshold quota, you know, for companies trying to focus on quantity rather than quality i can't even imagine how much more water down it's going to get from here on out anime to feel like it's just always trying to play it safe i think that is absolutely a bad thing now getting into this actual article here that was you know posted i want to go over a few highlights for one okay. what this article tries to point out is that there is quite a few companies that are now investing in anime hollywood is obviously a big one we've definitely seen it as of late with netflix and what they've been doing especially with their live actions like for instance you know one piece and that's a good example here is that with the live action one piece there is definitely a lot more merchandise of one piece in the west than there was five years ago yeah one piece has always been a huge series but definitely wasn't as big in Hey, idiot, no one cares about your shitty internet and your shitty fucking computer and how you can't fucking watch the stream. Focus on the fucking video, that's the thing. Why are you fucking talking about your own fucking problems right now? Ain't you got anything better to say about Chibi Singh? In other countries, Show some respect. obviously it is now, thanks to the live action's popularity. So let's get another double-edged sword of good and bad. But, back into the main point, a lot of companies are investing in it that are mainly just financial companies. You have, yeah. you know, Maru Bini, and then you also have Mizuho. And these two companies are basically financial companies that invest in anime, and they also, some of these companies, like for instance Questry here, they have a blockchain, which aka, if you don't know what a blockchain is. Anytime you hear blockchain, anytime you hear NFT, crypto, blockchain, what's the other fucking buzzword? Uh, Web3, it's probably a scam. It is cryptocurrency. And so you have these financial companies that are investing in anime that clearly don't I'm, care about anime. Yeah. They, they, don't, they don't know anything about anime. They don't give a fuck. They just see that the anime is getting more popularized, more mainstream in the Western audience, and they think that it's a good business venture. They have no clue about what kind of existing audience there is. They already have some sort of formula, some sort of script that they're going to follow to adhere to a modern audience. And it could be a disaster. They don't. At the end of the day, they don't care about, the, you know, anime. They just, they want to make money as quick as possible. And since yep. anime is very lucrative and it's a growing and thriving business, I yep. mean, even this article kind of points it out that, you know, the overall, you know, estimate of, like, the growth of anime in just 2022 was 2.9 billion USD. Damn. It's pretty insane. And it's only growing as time goes on. Anime is no longer a niche form of And look at this. It's just overseas sales of Japanese content. Not even the Japanese audience, we're talking specifically about overseas sales. 2.9 billion, I'm assuming, US dollars. Entertainment, it is actively becoming very huge all around the world. And even this article points out what I've been talking about for years now. Anime has gotten more popular thanks to COVID-19. With the pandemic and yeah. a lot of people being shut inside their house and basically, you know, having nothing else to do. But That's the interesting thing, because during that time... Actually, a lot of content creators' uh, careers uh, got jump-started because everyone was inside and everyone had nothing better to do but just watch streams or watch YouTube or just watch content. But what happened then was a lot of those people, they got the wrong idea, like a wrong expectations of, I guess, performance and engagements and analytics of their content because obviously during those times, everyone's forced inside. They got nothing to do. But as the vaccines rolled out and as the regulations slowed down and people were more just acting like, you know, it didn't exist anymore. A lot of the attention died down. And a lot of people thought their careers were over. But no, it's like that was the baseline. It's just you just had an inflated number that you're comparing yourself to. And a lot of the tech companies as well um, decided a, they noticed a, a huge a surge in like e-commerce businesses or basically just anything. And governments were getting, giving out loans to these companies at such a low interest rate. It became like an arms race and trying to recruit as many talent as possible. 
Google, Amazon, Facebook, you know, Microsoft, all these big tech companies overhired. And then after the end of the pandemic, what happened was interest rates start to go up and they realize, oh shit, you know, we thought that we could, you know, sustain this level of volume of people coming in, but that's actually not the case. And that's why a lot of layoffs and a lot of hiring freezes are happening. And in that example and applying to this specific example, these are figures that they're seeing during the pandemic times. I wonder if that's going to recalibrate and their expectations of demand for anime is actually lower than they think and it could be a disaster. I but either play video games or watch something. A lot of people that, you know, used to hate anime or call people weirdos because if you liked anime, you're weird dived into anime because, you know, they had nothing better to do. And this is why we have a lot of those takes in you know, in today's society with the anime community where you have people that are like, this anime is weird, how sh this shouldn't exist, etc. And those same people... I don't argue with them. Because if you show them an anime like Gushing Over Magical Girls, where it's a bunch of middle school girls with some bondage kink shit going on, how do you explain to them? You don't explain to them. Watching that shit is creepy and weird, and I've covered it. And it's a bit hypocritic. But I know of the culture, and I try to just kind of look away from that shit. But at the same time, I can totally understand why newcomers coming in, they see all these etchy and random shows where they're whoring out fucking 13, 14 year old kids for the sake of DVD sales. Of course it seems weird. Well, let's say that are the people that used to call anime fans weirdos to begin with just because they watched anime. The only reason why they watch anime now is because it's popular. That, that, that's the real reason. But anyways, all I'm going to say is, is that this article legitimately outlines the overall future of anime. And there is some good and bad here with this article that it highlights. It highlights that, you know, with these investments, with these companies, it will eventually take away the power from the production committee. And again, remember, there's, you can always have a choice and you can always think of different perspectives, right? What we covered so far was the Doomer news, the war scenario. But... Things could also be good with a lot of more money coming in, with a lot of more resources coming in. It could help potentially create better work-life balance for people. It could potentially have better pay for animators. And it could potentially increase the quality of the anime due to these new resources. But quite often what happens in capitalism and society is that human greed gets in the way of that. And even if you have more resources, the people at the top kind of just hog all that shit. And the people that need it the most don't get a proportional stake of it. So, you know, there's also that aspect. I know every animation studio goes through the production committee besides KyoAni. And um, there could be a few I'm unaware of. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. I'm not someone that says I know everything, etc. I'm very... Do I think MAPPA animators will finally get a lunch break? If they're lucky, and if they got enough funding, maybe their employees will get like a free banana every other week. Yeah, I think that's about the extent of the benefits they'll get from the new resources. Middle of the road, like, you know, bottom of the barrel of knowledge. Like, I don't really know everything. But the point of the matter is, is that the production committee pretty much has a huge amount of weight in terms of what gets adapted and what studio gets what anime to adapt. And because of that, that's just how the system has worked for a very long time. And with these companies investing, and this is the good part of it, it will allow the production community to lose power and companies to basically make more money and to be able to potentially, probably cool. not going to happen, but potentially pay their employees better. For instance, right, but again, right, when you give these corporations all the money and resources, do you think they're going to increase employee pay? I just... Be like in the history of capitalism, that's never fucking happened. Without strong labor unions and working rights, you don't have any bargaining power. You're lucky that you have a fucking job. The employers can just <laughs> use this power dynamic to pocket all the fucking extra money while nothing changes. Since the, um, this article highlights that MAPPA is kind of shifting away from being with the production committee and that they're okay. able to pay their employees better. Which, uh, anyone that knows about MAPPA horror stories knows that's, uh, not entirely accurate. So, uh, yeah, overall, we will have to see where the future takes us, but, um, dark days are ahead, everyone. I do really think, though, get- Remember, you can always think of it in a, you know, a bad way. Just, just remember that at the end of the day, the more doomer way you think about life, the more it's gonna become a self-fulfilling prophecy.
And it doesn't mean that because I feel this bad thing is going to happen, that the anime industry is going to happen like that. No, I'm just saying you, it's up to you at the end of the day to think in the way that you want it to happen. And that's going to impact your mood in life, right? Yes, we can recognize that bad things could happen, but we can also recognize good things can happen. I think that some of the most profound things that I've ever heard in life that really changed my mindset is hope for the best, right? You want to always hope for the best and have some reasons to cling on to, look forward to. Because if you don't have that, then everything's going to be depressing. Hope for the best, but expect or prepare for the worst, right? Always cover your ass, always understand what could go wrong, but also at the same time, hope for the best that you don't just become a doomer pill guy that just has no expectations and have no faith in life. But that's the video. Please go give Chibi a like on the video. Sub to his channel if you haven't. And I'll see y'all in the next one.